We got these prize cards for game one here. Ooh, fancy shock. Nothing too bad. Too dark energy for Damien. It's going to be a little bit of a detriment. You only play six in this specific list, so you're going to have to work hard to find those uh, earthen vessels. Meanwhile, the 1-1 one -one Chinchino line of four McKinley. Nothing too bad, I guess. Yep, we can work with this. Not too terrible of prizes. Looks to be nicely spaced out. Plenty of ancient cards available for Damien to uh, go on the aggressive, maybe take some big knockouts in this game. We'll see if the hands are conducive to those strategies. Ancient cards, ancient casters casting the match. <laughs> <laughs> Back in my day. <laughs> Looks like Damien is going to start things off for us and has Earthen Vessel in hand. That's going to be great. And opposite discard that Explorer's Guidance. I'm going to take a quick look at the deck and see those prize cards. Start the count. The ancient cards have reached the discard pile. And what a great way to start things off. Unfortunately, Damien's going to realize a couple of those dark energies aren't going to be available. But when you start to move that Radiant Greninja to the top, maybe, uh, maybe you are in for a pretty solid turn here. Listen, you just got to start taking prizes. It's the best way to get, the, get to those energies. Yeah, I mean, if you get all of them, you win. <laughs> I'm just hoping the count doesn't go over 10. I only have 10 fingers. <laughs> that's tough, yeah. Well, that's, that's why there's two of us. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. All right, so 20 is our limit. Which is not good, because then you can't even knock out a Luke. You have E-Star. Oh, no. Looks like the hand for Damien is going to be pretty good here. You have an Ultra Ball. It's going to be a little costly, but you can go ahead and fetch that Radiant Greninja if you want. It is worth the cost, as it is one of the most important cards in the deck. We've seen players time and time again focus on this as their Radiant Pokemon, the one-of card. And you combine that now with your one-of A-spec card, too. It's, uh, those, those tend to be very important pieces <laughs> to your strategy. Yeah, uh, most any deck should probably be playing uh, a Radiant Pokemon and an A-spec. They're just too powerful. You start to get a read as McKinley taking a look at the way this hand is playing out. Energy's hitting the discard pile when a Radiant Greninja is played. It tends to mean that the rest of the hand's pretty good or full of energy because here come the energies down and you only need two for Sada and you would have two concealed cards by the time you could even play it. <laughs> so now there's likely going to be at least three in there. First concealed cards for Damien. Discarding that fighting energy he finds another Earthen Vessel and a Counter Catcher. Now, the big thing about Damien's list is the only Gust he is playing is that Prime Catcher, and two Counter Catchers opting not for the one of Boss's orders. Just the energy and a pass for the turn. It can, certainly can be interesting when you focus on the Counter Catcher strategy. You usually want to fall behind in instances, but that means potentially you could be uh, putting some damage on the board to make some knockouts easier down the road. But when you start Mancino on the other side, it means prize cards might be falling early and those counter catchers aren't as successful. Yeah, we already have the knockout with that Vengeance fletching on that Mancino if it stays in the active spot, but McKinley did flip a Tails on this capturing aroma, allowing for a basic Pokemon to be searched for the deck. Most likely going to be that Lugia V. That's pretty important to get into play for this deck. Capturing aroma, a lot of players <laughs> when we first saw Lugia did not love this card because you don't love the, the variance that comes along with it. But it's the one card where you flip tails and you're like, you know what? This worked out pretty well. <laughs> I, I, I really needed this Lugia V and sure enough, here it is. We'll have to see what the rest of McKinley's hand holds. Wow. A lot of energy. Ooh. Lugia V star. At least you got the jet. You can bring up that Lugia V and read the wind away in Archeops. There's a Luminion maybe in hand, but McKinley opting not to play it down. It'll just be a different full art. Now yep. it's back to Damien. Draws a nest ball. That's going to be pretty good if Damien wants to utilize Professor Sada's vitality to the max. And this is where Damien's strategy looks even better. There is no easy Minchino knockout. You don't really even want that knockout right now. You want to uh, put a, a relevant amount of damage into that Lugia V. Sure enough, you can do just that. Counter is not going to be as important right now as you already have a lot going for you. Let's get some energies, throw those in the discard pile, and try to find those supporter cards. And just like that, all of the dark energies that are in the deck are now searched out in play or in the discard. And this Pokegear is going to have to 
be pretty good, but we're gonna conceal cards first. You see Damien there playing those oh. ancient cards off to the side, and that looked like a pretty good draw. Yeah, Sada's lined up. It's never great when you're staring down your opponent, taking two energies out of the discard, prepping for that Professor what, Sada's What vitality. are you doing there? <laughs> stop, stop. <laughs> Three cards for that supporter, and more importantly, those two energy in play now. Damien has another dark, so you can opt to even attach that to the Bench Roaring Moon or save it for concealed cards later on. Even more ancient cards reaching the discard pile there. It's like that uh, alternate art of the Flutter Main, along with Explorer's uh, Guidance there. Already saw off the three cards from Sada, it was two Explorer's Guidance and another Poke Gear. <laughs> so when your supporter finds you supporters, you know, you're doing all right. And with Damien fetching out another Roaring Moon, we could see the energy go on that one, kind of spread it out a little bit in preparation for another Sada. Yeah. And uh, there is that Vengeance Fletching, going to be 130 damage to those six Ancient cards in the discard. And that's going to help try to make this a two-hit knockout against Lugia V-Star. Basically locked up at this point, even if the uh, Roaring Moon and the active were to fall to Lugia V-Star, just means one more card is a knockout, and that's very easy to find. Just play your supporter, and you're already there. That was a Luminion in hand for McKinley. Opted not to play it last turn. Now we have Lugia V-Star going onto the active, and then just a ton of energies in hand. We might have to see the Iono. Oh, there's just an Iono in hand. McKinley opting just to save everything for this turn, hoping to get a second Archaeops in the discard now. You need to find some, yeah, you need to find some discarding effects. It's, it, they, they're not as easy to find as they once were. There's, it's not the, the quick balls. You need all the Ultra Balls rolling your way. Looks like there is Ultra Ball, double Ultra Ball. Double Ultra Ball can do it. You can do it, you lose the hand, basically. But we'll take that. You, you're left with, what, one card? <laughs> but you do have two Archaeops to work with. Hey, that one card could be a Professor's Research. And that's always going to be great for next turn. Pretty fortunate to find those. It can be so difficult. You're on the clock immediately. As you see, this Lugia will be knocked out next turn. You want to make the most use of it as you can. And now both Primal Turbo Archaeops will be lined up, ready to go after the use of this V-Star. Now, Kyle, is McKinley ever going to want to bench another two-prizer in this match now? Absolutely not. At this point, you are, you're ready to just continue to, to push forward with the, the Chinchinos and the Snorlaxes, try to make sure that the uh, prize counts continue to just go back and forth, one-to-one, -one, and use resources like Iono to try to disrupt your opponent's hand. Hopefully, they're left with uh, fewer of those resources, as you've seen the Explorer's Guidance and the Sada's played out, and maybe they don't have energies to draw back up with Radiant Greninja you can leave them on a dead hand and find an opportunity to come back. Well, the Chops are back in town, Kyle. Both of the Archaeops onto the bench thanks to that Summoning Star V-Star power from Lugia. You get to charge up some energies here, maybe take a knockout. Yeah, sacrificed a good amount of energies to get to this point. But McKinley plays 17. I think we'll be okay. That's a lot. Second Primal Turbo. First one charged up that Snorlax on the bench. The single V guard. That means we're going to have a retreat from the active McKinley trying to save those two prizes and take them away from Damien. What a read. Yeah, I mean, you you know you're the typically you're only going to run into one boss's orders, maybe one or two counter catchers in the list. You've already seen a counter catcher fall by the wayside from Damien as a discard, and it's going to be pretty difficult to target down this Lugia V star. But McKinley does not know yet that the aspect of choice is Prime Catcher. There is no therapeutic energy on that Snorlax, but we got one heads. Oh, Snorlax is a little bit tired this morning. You know, it's, a, it's, it's an early morning. I, 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 I don't blame him. But ultimately, you don't need the therapeutic energy in spots like this. Your, your opponent's probably going to knock out Snorlax if they want to. <laughs> and that's why that gift energy is so important on that Snorlax. Being able to draw up to seven cards after a knockout. 
And we see a Nest Ball from Damien here, eyeing down maybe a Coridon, maybe another Roaring Moon. But we do know there's that Professor Sada's Vitality already in hand. All right, at this point, you just want to continue to present threats. And Coridon is one that doesn't necessarily need all those cards in the discard pile that we'd see from Damien throwing resources away left and right. If you can present Coridon in the mid stages of the game, usually ends up uh, being a benefit when you're going for those big knockouts at the end. Damien going to start with the pokey gear here. Finds maybe an explorer. No, there is a Sada in there. So able to chain together Professor Sada's vitalities. Turn after turn is really the biggest thing for this ancient box deck. And Damien seems to be doing just that, having two in hand already. Wow. Yeah, this is a dream hand. You see still multiple earthen vessels as well. The issue now is how many energies are left in the deck. If you had a couple more that weren't in the prize cards... Maybe it'd be a different story, but at least these resources are reaching the discard pile. I think there's like one fighting energy left. Now, Damien does have access to Sphere Energy Retrieval if he's ever able to draw into that. Also, you can have your two Super Rods shuffle back some energy, but it's kind of a non-bow with that Professor Sada's Vitality. Concealed Cards is going to get rid of that last fighting energy, so it's all up to the supporters for right now. Yep, have not seen the energy attachment for the turn, but also haven't seen the supporter, and that's what Sada is all about in this spot. Get that dark energy to the active Pokemon. We already see upwards of nine ancient cards in the Lost Zone. Make it ten with this Sada. You clearly have that knockout already lined up on Snorlax. Three more cards, three more ancient cards to the hand. Not able to discard those just yet, but has the knockout already with plenty of ancient cards in the discard. Right, a little additional hit points there from the capsule, and maybe that can make this a little more difficult for each Chino to follow up for a knockout. We're going to have a Vengeance fletching for 170 here, it seems like. Remember, that is going to trigger that gift energy. McKinley only has two cards in hand. Granted, one of them is that Professor's Research. He's very excited about pulling <laughs> five cards right here. I mean, I would be. <laughs> that is uh, pretty great. It's basically a built-in supporter. Important to note, Damien did find one of the dark energies from the prize cards there. And McKinley already knows. Yeah, I want to attack with this Chinchino. I'm going to order the special roll. Ooh, I like the special roll. Comes with eel sauce on top. Okay, sign me up. I'm not sure if I love the, the ordering here. We saw the Great Ball and the Capturing Aroma, and now you're pulling out a Pokemon that you would like to find off of the Great Ball. You could first use the, uh, the Archaeops, grab those energies, then use the Great Ball first, then follow up with the Capturing Aroma. The only issue is you don't know what you're going to flip off the Capturing Aroma heads or tails. So it's, it is tricky to, to maneuver around these stages, and it looks like going to end up with like a middle ground here of... We can we can search out what we know with the, the resolution of the aroma, get some energies, then play the, the great ball and see what happens. Yeah, I think either way, you're just looking for that chinchino there. So being able to grab it off the first one, that's fine. <laughs> we'll take it. Three energies from both of the primal turbos onto that chinchino. To your point earlier about maybe ever playing down another uh, two prize Pokemon, there is a world where you eventually would try to sneak in another Lugia V-Star. It just depends on how many ancient cards are in the discard pile. Because if you can make use of those hit points and stick around for an additional turn, maybe you do take the risk and play down another Lugia. But if you do have the resources to continue to just present one price threats, you go for that. Archaeops was found off of the Great Ball, which is pretty good now because the Ultra Ball is able to be played from the hand, discarding that Archaeops and that Professor's Research. I think McKinley drawing into those energies off of the gift energy means you're not going to want to discard this hand. Getting a read on the counts. He's going to realize 1-1 one, one Shinchino in the prize cards. So you can grab Minchino for now and hopefully 
off the next few prizes that you find, you're able to grab another Chichino and use that Pokemon to attack. It'll be interesting to see if McKinley has another supporter in hand to go along with those two energies. It is another Professor's Research, so having to discard more resources here, that's all the jet energy is gone. Yeah, I, I'm curious what we're searching for at this point. Like playing supporters for the sake of playing supporters isn't my favorite thing to do, especially when you're holding on to some precious resources like those energies. If it comes down to the end game and you know that you have to present five threats to try to win a game, that's a lot of energies. And even though you play 17, we've seen, what, four, five, six thrown away already at this point. It's, it's getting pretty drastic. I think we'll have 11 in the discard pile by the time this Chinchino's knocked out. And it's definitely scary trying to manage your resources as the game goes on, especially against a single prize deck like this Ancient Toolbox. Karidon brought to the active. After the knockout, Damien's going to try to sneak in a primordial beatdown on this Chinchino. Going to have to have a few more bench Pokemon, though. And by a few more, I mean one. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, we're, I think we'll get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not too worrisome. <laughs> uh, Damien does opt for the Explorer's Guidance here, trying to build that discard, maybe find that superior energy retrieval, which he did. Going to have to discard a pal pad, though. It's funny, I'll be critical of McKinley's discards. As, as the resources are so vital. And meanwhile, on the other side for Damien, great job throwing away four resources. <laughs> but that is that is the, the way that the deck works. And uh, sure enough, you just need to continue to build up that discard pile. It's unfortunate to lose the pal pad, but two more cards uh, to build up for the fletching is pretty solid. A three with the Explorer's Guidance as well. Don't forget yeah. those supporters are also ancient cards. opted for that ancient booster energy capsule over the pal pad superior energy retrieval looks fantastic in this spot you see four cards in the discard pile but you can continue to just build that up and you want to have some still re remaining for the the sada at whatever point you'll need it but if there's no hand disruption and you just continue to build on this hand size you definitely want to get a count for ionos right now and that's what damien's thinking uh, how likely am I to keep this hand? Oh, there's only one Iono. Maybe I uh, got to be careful with the superior. The thing is, there's only two Iono in the list for McKinley. Oh. So just having one out left to try to disrupt the hand from Damien does have access to Luminion V, though. So if he decides he wants to bench that liability, you can get that Iono. And now might be the time just to do it. You have a Pokegear being used on that Professor Sato's Vitality. I think all of them are in the hand now that are left. No pal pads. So if Iono does get played, that's going to be putting them to the bottom of the deck. Wow. <laughs> finds three items there. Trekking Shoes continues to dig. Finds a counter catcher. Ooh, that counter catcher is pretty good right Woo! now. Bringing up that Lugia V-Star. That was a calculated risk there from Damien, continuing to pull through even after using a supporter, just uses the, the Poke Gears to try to burn through a little more. And then the, the Poke Stop finds that counter catcher to take the two prize Pokemon here. And now Damien is forced to bench down a Flutter Main just to get enough damage off this primordial beatdown to take the knockout on Lugia V-Star, but I think it's worth it. Oh, absolutely. It's one issue now that we see you're using the superior energy retrieval we've already seen plenty of earthen vessels you get all these energies back into your hand but if this is iono knockout on the other side you're not left with much it's all the sadas to the bottom of the deck too and attaching the dark energy to the active instead of the fighting means it's just one less out for you to get the knockout with a roaring moon on the bench Ancient boosters galore. But again, McKinley still just might be out of resources in the next couple turns. Yep. Damien wisely trying to identify every resource available left for McKinley. 
I guess the one good news with knocking out the Lugia of Eastar for McKinley, that's not knocking out the Chinchino with the energies. Yeah, we, it, that's that's a very great point. There's, every threat typically is going to require three additional energies. You're now allowing special roll to happen twice. Two knockouts for these three energies is a, a great trade-off for McKinley. You just see attachment for the turn here from McKinley. It's trying to play out some of these energies that we had seen in hand. And there's no Luminion. There's no Iono. Wow. That is not good news. Three, three prize cards, but Damien has every resource available. Damien decides to bring up the Coridon with that Ancient Booster Energy Capsule, hoping to just Sada to it and attach for the turn to take the knockout. Already has enough Ancient Pokemon in play for Primordial Beatdown. Oh, Jeremy, I don't know. You see... What, capturing aromas there. There were chances to to dig for the Luminion, Pokestop even, find your Master Ball. Yeah. There were there were outs to maybe disrupt this hand. I think this was the hand that you could not allow to continue because this leads to a board state that's almost inevitable. Board state's almost inevitable, and just one card in the deck. Damien has his entire deck in his hand, basically, and that's going to be... Pretty good news if Iono is played now. Just easier to go through the deck. You know what you have to search for. There's a knockout. Too many cards in hand for Gift Energy. This is where we need what um, amazing rare Raikou. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lugia, wow. what tricks do you have? <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> because this. This is a, it's a little too singular of a strategy at this point. Yes, you can take knockouts with Chinchino. You can remove Coridon from play. Boss's orders It's going to target down the Radiant Greninja and just try to stall here. One card left, but there is plenty of energies to retreat this Pokemon. You have to assume that there's a way to get the cards back into the deck. You have plenty of energies. You have Super Rod in hand, I believe. And then... Even Prime Catcher to be able to get out of the active spot. And this is a strategy that a lot of people try to use against Ancient Box towards the end of the game when they know it's just inevitable that they're going to be able to take those big knockouts. Yep. And that's trying to stop it. But Can't blame McKinley for trying there. Yep. Understands that that was the plan. If the Super Rod was in the prize cards, maybe Damien overplayed their resources but now realizes that that is not going to happen. you got to save as much time as you can. Let's move on to game two with Damien up with 1-0. And that was with a turn two summoning star for double Archeops. You got Chinchino's in play, able to get energy on your attackers. It's just unable to get through all of those single prize Pokemon from Damien's side of the board. Yeah, it, I mean, you, you think about how the, the prizes fly in this matchup. It seems like you need Damien to have an off turn and uh, either miss a knockout, waste uh, time attacking into a Pokemon that won't be knocked out later. If you maybe have a situation, well, we'll, we'll go down into that rabbit hole later. I've got plenty to, to go on for that. But for now, let's take a look at how this game closed out. Just knockouts left and right. Damage left on the Lugia. Gift energy activated. Gave McKinley plenty of resources to find answers but the answers didn't lead to additional prize cards, and that's what we needed. And I think this upcoming turn was probably the biggest. Damien able to just truly try to get set up, but opting for the Explorer's Guidance over pretty much the Sada, just to guarantee yet again. And Damien brought up that Lugia V-Star, took the knockout, and McKinley already had the knockout on the active, but decided not to try to go for that Luminion Iono play. Yep. The clock was ticking there. Damien identified the that the uh, Collapse Stadium was an out to remove that Lugia from play and, and avoid those prizes being taken. And that's where I want to see a difference here in game two. If McKinley is able to use this Lugia V here, and sure, read the wind, do whatever you need to, but eventually let this Pokemon absorb a shot, get it to the bench, remove it from play if you can, After and then that damage is cleared up. You then have this free reign to take over in the prize race. 
And I, I don't like that bench of that second Lugia V there. There's essentially a 0% chance that you're going to get knocked out from a deck like this Ancient Box deck on your lone Lugia V. You even have a Mancino on the bench, but now there's two, two prize Pokemon in play for Damien to try to work around. Starting Earthen Vessel is just great. It's, it's so good. <laughs> just not only getting the energies, but thinning those out of your deck so that you have more opportunities to find the Sadas and the other resources that you're looking for on that opening turn. It can be a dangerous turn. It, it's, it's rarely ever a knockout, but to, to deal uh, at least 140 in a spot like this would be huge. 120 even, just something to, to leave the Lugia V, which would soon be a V star in range of being knocked out on the next turn would be excellent. We'll have to see if the Professor Sada's vitality is in the hand for Damien. Plenty of energies, plenty of earthen vessels, too. Yep, this is the way to do it. Continue to thin out, pull all the energies out of the deck, and then use that Poke Gear. And you've got a lot of good hits. If you find the Explorer, then you're not going to get the attack this turn. It has to be the Sada. And that's a, a lot of the danger that comes with the opening turn here. Well, it's all on this Poke Gear, Kyle. Seven cards trying to find a supporter. Other than that, there's nothing. Woo! First one in the window. Oh, wow. Okay, we're going to have a game here. Yep, this is the danger you've talked about so often, which is why a lot of players tend to go for the awakening drum in this deck. You, you just want to have opportunities to draw in this opening turn to get to the Sato's Vitality. It's that important. It's vital to the deck's success with that initial attack. And it's, it's, it's everything Damien needs right here. And I believe, yep, there is a Roaring Moon in the hand to be able to benefit from the Sada as well. Sada to one Pokemon never feels great. Still pretty good, but being able to get the full two Pokemon charged up, now that's better. Sada. <laughs> Plenty wow. of Pokemon being added to the bench here now, too. That was a pretty great draw there. Going with the four on the bench now. This means it's going to be dealing 150 damage. It's enough to take a two-hit knockout. Other than that, though, Damien's hand, not very good. You know, <laughs> we'll, we'll take it. This board state looks terrifying. <laughs> it looks ionable. We'll it, see what McKinley even has to work with. It's a Master Ball sighting. Okay. All right, Master Ball. Could be Mr. anything Jack you want. For a Pokemon. Yeah, it could even be a Lugia V Star. Ooh. Or an Archaeops. Or a bird, yeah. There is the Ultra Ball in hand, so place this Archaeops in the discard pile. Maybe find Luminion if you don't love Serena, but I think I like Serena. There's Ultra Ball into Archaeops. Discard Archaeops with Serena. Draw five. And then just hope. Rip the Lugia V Star off the top. Ooh. Or you can uh, Ultra Ball for Luminion for Jacques. No, that doesn't do it. Boo. No. <laughs> do the fun one. I, I think you have to. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I believe all three Lugia V-Star are, are in the deck. You still have Capturing Aromas you can flip heads on. Absolutely. Your other Ultra Balls, Great Ball even. No, I, I'm pretty sure this is just correct at this point. You have to play to your outs. Your outs say... We got to get a little risky. And five cards is plenty. McKinley <laughs> with the biggest smile of the day so far. Says, oh, yeah, it's time. <laughs> it's going to be a big five cards to keep McKinley's hopes alive. Yolo. Four top eight. Serena. Do we see a Lugia V star? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> It's that beautiful play Pokemon one, too. This hand isn't good, <laughs> but that's exactly what you needed. That just means both players' hands aren't good. That's true. All right. And this is a smart thinking from McKinley here. That Lugia V in the active spot is already going to get to it knocked out by pretty much anything that Damien has. Evolving that Lugia V on the bench to the V Star, able to still use Summoning Star, get those Archeops out, and you have that double turbo to retreat already. Yep, and this leads to the play I was talking about earlier, is if you can make use of the hit points of the Lugia V star, then collapse stadium away a damaged Pokemon like the Lugia V, then the prize race becomes that much easier. 
his first primal turbo. What do you think he's going to be uh, charging up, the Lugia V-Star or the Chinchino? I like the Lugia V-Star. I think Chinchino's an easy Pokemon to knock out at this point, and you're going to use that for the later trades. Let's use Lugia while we still have the hit points. There's potential to get three uses out of this Lugia if the energies aren't there for Damien. You don't have a strong read on the hand right now, and it's not strong. That is true, and I think McKinley agrees with you. Gift energy and double turbo found off that first primal turbo. Missed energy from the hand, and then it might as well use your second primal turbo, charge up that Chinchino anyway. Yeah, these are energies you don't want to draw off the top, so throw them down. Protect Ooh. the Lugia if you see the counter catcher here on the, in the early stages. I do like that. It's a strong read as well. Especially with how weak McKinley's hand is left after that Serena. Yep, can't leave two prize cards available and then not get rewarded for, for losing <laughs> this Pokemon. There's the retreat to the V-Star, freshly powered up, and there is that Tempest Dive for the knockout. And Damien needs to find something quick off the top of the deck. Well, it's not going to be an energy. We've pulled all those. Oh, no. Oh. We're in theme deck mode. <laughs> This is a dangerous place to be. There's no additional energies for the next turn. This is nowhere near a knockout. And Lugia is going to be eaten good in game two. McKinley looks almost surprised. Finds an <laughs> Ultra Ball off the top of the deck. That's going to be able to clear this hand out a little bit and find a Luminion if you do want to support her. But honestly, I just like attacking. It doesn't. Yeah, like, it, it doesn't really advance what you're doing at this point, but we've also seen McKinley loves playing supporters. <laughs> oh, there's a heads from the capturing aroma. Going to be able to thin out an Archeops for this Ultra Ball, potentially. I like to think of it as fate signaling McKinley not to go for Luminion yet. <laughs> <laughs> take an evolution. <laughs> You're doing great. Just calm down. You're fine. Archeops to the hand. Yeah, there is also the thing about the matchup as well. You're playing against an ancient box deck that does not play hand disruption. Like, your cards are going to be safe. Yeah, but it, it goes against the strategy of, of the, the Clap Stadium. But also, maybe you've already got enough of a, oh. of a lead here with the Lugia absorbing three potential attacks. And it seems like McKinley agrees, finds that Minchino has the Chinchino in hand. So you just got attackers. You got Primal Turbo for your energies. What else do you need? Yeah, this is this is completely fine. Pull all the energies out of the deck, load up your Pokemon so that you have answers built in on board. That's what supporters are meant for anyways. They're built to get you to situations like this. And if you ever are in a detrimental spot, probably means your opponent took a knockout. Board space will open, and then you have the Luminion ready to help. Couple of energies on that Chinchino and Minchino. Important note, Gift is not on that Minchino, so that's the only Pokemon that if it gets knocked out, McKinley would not be able to draw a new hand. And that's Damien here. How much time do you give this? If next turn's draw is bad, do you run away? Yeah. Because 17 minutes after the astounding game one that you had, you have to think that you're ready to just play a real game of Pokemon here. We'll yeah. give it one more shot, one more look at the top of the deck. Earthen Vessel is a big no-no. Let's run away. Okay. Game three coming up. We got a game three to start off our day two here in Orlando. Sound that alarm. And I think our players are going to have enough time to actually finish this in a good fashion. That's exactly what McKinley needed to do. Yes, yeah, that was that was a, a quick paced game. Also builds a lot of confidence, realizing that your strategy wasn't wrong. It's just your opponent had a pop off start game one. Everything was going Damien's way. Sada played basically every turn. And then you also saw the counter catcher at the perfect time. So a lot has to go right for Damien, but his, his deck is also built to do that. So maybe McKinley now feels a little more confident going into this final game that uh, we, can, we can definitely work in this prize race. And I was criticizing it on the first turn, benching that second Lugia V, but it came in clutch for McKinley, being able to promote that fresh V-Star, to be able to take a knockout, take a hit coming back, and able to just clean up the game. 
in this game too. Yep, this is all she wrote at this point. Simple knockout there. <laughs> you got four energies in hand. Yeah, here you go, just take an earthen vessel. You know what, I need to go to the next game and see if I can get a better hand to work with. And uh, yeah, as you were saying, the, the Lugia bench, it's not the worst thing in the world, obviously. You think about resources and how they're used in this matchup. They're so vital for McKinley. A resource that's not spoken about a lot is hit points. If you have hit points to use, put them into a position to give you an, a, a little bit of an edge. And McKinley was doing a great job there with that. Now, Damian did get that Professor Sada's vitality on the first turn, being able to get that attack off but was unable to really convert it into anything else and just ran out of steam directly after that round, or game one. We'll have to see if this game three is any different. Yeah, I'm excited to see the opening hands here. This could be a great closeout to our inaugural round of day two. Both these players fighting to stay alive, get themselves some additional points and maybe work their way into top eight contention here at the largest regional so far. Yeah, both of these players sitting at nine, one, and two. That means they have 29 match points. I'm hoping to get to that 36 no. number. Master oh, ball, double super golly rod, gee. pal pad. Double rod, double ultra ball, and then the master ball of all things. Oh, no. Oh, but hold up. Right. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of opening search here from Damian. This could be pretty good. Nest Ball able to grab a Pokemon from the deck, get it onto the bench. Usually you want to grab that Radiant Greninja, but Damien already has it in hand. Able to just fill out the bench a little bit for this primordial beatdown in the future. Jimmy, I can't talk enough about Superior Energy Retrieval, Super Rod. Those resources in this deck in particular are vital oh, to yeah. having success. It's such a, an overlooked thing, but attaching energy for the turn in this deck is difficult if you don't have those cards to work with and Damien's gonna find the bad news eventually it may not be the first thing you search for and when you're going through the deck but you're gonna find out by the mid stage you have one superior energy retrieval to work with and if you don't find it you're in trouble yeah I mean game one came down to Damien having that last super rod to be able to just put cards back in the deck so he doesn't deck out yep and we're burning Trekking shoes rolling through. We've got a lot of cards hitting the discard pile. Of course, it's how the deck works. You have to use that Sada's Vitality to continue to play these energies. But if you're not attaching energy for the turn, when it comes to that turn three, four, five in the mid stage, when you're trading with McKinley, it's, it's, it ends poorly. It means that you need a Sada every single turn. Now, even with the poor prize cards for Damien, able to couple together a pretty good turn one, get some cards played. You have that Professor Sada's Vitality in hand with another energy for concealed cards on the next turn. The thing is, is this hand going to stick around or not? There's a couple I Iono in McKinley's hand. Yeah, you can feel it's just not the setup that McKinley wants right here. Going to tentatively play down those Pokemon onto the bench. Save the Ultra Ball for another day. Yes, it goes to the bottom of the deck, but there's plenty of ways to shuffle that back around and maybe... That will be the Ultra Ball that leads to Archaeops, but this is not the hand for Energy's double aroma. Yeah. We need birds. <laughs> I don't we even like attaching birds. here. I think we need to just start using aromas and read the wind with one of the birds. All right, well, capturing aroma needs a heads, finds a tails. <laughs> I know what you're looking for. <laughs> here, here we go. <laughs> Yeah, you, this, you want aluminum, right? This like, is this is nightmare fuel, uh, even considering the second Lugia, as this one is in a lot of danger. You don't know what the other flip is going to be off that aroma, and then you know your hand is going to be terrible. So yeah, this is when you go for that aluminum, play it safe. If the aroma is tails, you go find the second Lugia. If it's heads, one bird down. Oh, oh wow. my. Two uh, tails for capturing aroma here. Doing its best nest ball impression. <laughs> it's a great job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know about this. I, I think this one is supposed to be second Lugia. This is a dangerous spot. You, you think Damien pulled together 15 ancient cards in the discard along with a Roaring Moon attack? I think having this Lugia as your your sole answer to this board is terrifying. 
There, you need, you're going to need multiple turns to recover from a hand that is just energies. Read the win has to be so good here. And the board state's going to be a wreck after you play the Luminion. Well, we were talking all about McKinley's hand after this, Iono. Let's talk about Damien's. Has the Earthen Vessel, discards a Fluttermane, four couple energies. You can concealed cards, and then there's a couple Professor Sada's Vitality just hanging in the hand. There you go. That's additional three cards added. Pokestop can add some more ancient cards to the discard pile. Maybe even find you some item cards that lead to more ancient Pokemon, ancient cards. Right. You're going to attack with Coridon in this spot, but it's... There's, there's, there's a world where you are threatening Lugia V-Stars <laughs> next turn. This hand is so good from Damien here. Don't have a count just yet on how many ancient cards are in the discard. Looks like they are deliberating a little bit with the judges. Yeah, we slowed down a little bit. This is a Pretty important time of the game, just 10 minutes remaining, so. Not sure what there is to deliberate about, but. If I had to guess, there's maybe a couple times for insufficient shuffling for Damien. Sure. All right, yep. Looks like you, uh, you eyed it up pretty good there. Just wanna make sure that we've got some sufficient randomization, even though players are trying to move quickly. I hate for this to lead to uh, a penalty here, but of course the stakes are so high in the late stages of day two. Yeah. All right, just making sure you can get that good shuffle going. Thankfully, just a warning. I'm not sure good. Damien will keep an eye on that as we go along. And you can't change your pace, though. You've got to play fast. <laughs> and this is ancient, ancient, ancient goodbye. I think I'm actually fine with that. You already have two Sada in hand. Losing that one's no big deal. You don't have Pow Pad though, but just trying to build up those ancient cards in the discard is priority number one. Three, four, five, six, it seems like. It looks like six so far. Still working with the, the, the two hit knockout from the Coridon here onto Lugia V, inevitably V Star. You're, you're just thinking about building up these Pokemon. You want Roaring Moons to be able to easily knock out Luminion Vs that could potentially be played down. Well, Sada attaches to the first Roaring Moon of the game here on the bench. Damien gets to draw three cards. Not going to be very useful, though. Three Pokegear in hand, along with that Explorer's Guidance and a Dark Energy. This is a great problem to have. <laughs> Until they go to the bottom of the deck. Yeah. <laughs> well, if uh, if those Ionos with one being played and one being placed on the bottom yeah. of the deck <laughs> don't ever show up, then I, th I think you're going to be all right. Wow. All right. We're spinning the wheel, right? I, I think you have to here. Lugia V-Star on the active. And then Professor's Research. You get to attach a double turbo energy, I guess. Maybe you attach the gift. You're already guaranteed one Archeops, but no, we're going to Jet Energy the Snorlax to the active, hoping to attack with that for the turn and save this Lugia V-Star on the bench. Yep, just Kinley thinking about their resources at this point. You play that one Archeops in the discard pile, and if you don't find a way to place another in there, then maybe that's the time where you spin Oof. the wheel, but that is exactly what you're looking for. Double, double Archeops with the Ultra Ball. We did it. This is what Lugia players dream of. Maybe not this board state against <laughs> it, but yeah, <laughs> sure. Summoning Star, grab two Archeops from the discard and get these Primal Turbos flowing. This is a dangerous board state. We see Lugia V-Star did its job. It absorbed the shot. It saved a prize card from being taken. And maybe if the hand finds that collapsed stadium at some point, you re remove that Pokemon from play. And just continue to attack with your ridiculous army of hungry Snorlaxes and special roll Chinchinos. It's a scary army. It's a delicious army. <laughs> <laughs> They're having a good time. 
McKinley taking a look here, just getting a count of the energies that are left. This first primal turbo is eyeing down. Double turbo energy, it seems like maybe V Guard. All right, looks like V Guard and a gift on the Snorlax. That gift will, will help McKinley come back if a knockout happens next turn. And then this second primal turbo is going to be used to char charge up this Chinchino. Damien has to be thinking about the pri the time left at this point. Under five minutes to go. I mean, this is a game that looks like it is going to be exchanges of single prize Pokemon left and right. Has to move quickly at this point. Hoping to see a little more pace from McKinley to try to maybe find a resolution here as well. But there's a lot of actions. There's 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 Snorlax flips that go along with this too. And each one of these cards is another 25, 30 seconds of play. Great ball looking at the top seven. Finds the Chinchino. It's going to be good for the future. Now you have a couple of attackers lined up and ready to go. It'll be interesting. I don't know if they got the minute or two back from the deliberation about the shuffling. Yeah, I would hope that that would be something added to the, to the the stream. I know that at least when when I was playing a lot more in situations like this, they'd say if it was under two minutes to find a resolution, they weren't weren't going to add yeah, the time. But and that's what I'm worried about. I mean, those minutes oh. can be so critical. Our timer just went up. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's keep talking and see if we can get it up to eight minutes because I think that's what we really need to get this going. Earthen Vessel going to discard a Flutter Main and find two Dark Energies for Damien. Yep. <laughs> this is, once more, the insufficient randomization now is a thing weighed on Damien here. Wants to make sure that he does a good job, but it just eats up the clock. Yeah, there's so much search and shuffle from Damien's cards, Pokey Gears, Earthen Vessel. You got to shuffle in between each one of those. Does find Asada. Didn't even need the full seven. <laughs> Another Poke Gear. Just moving at this point. Got what you need. Is there maybe a moment where you just explore his guidance this turn instead of Sada? I mean, or do you just Sada every time. It's not the worst but it also you you haven't built the inevitability yet so i think if this is a turn where you get all the energies in play and the and and also have an attachment for the turn then next turn looks like uh, explorer's guidance i want to have three energies on board on a turn where i use guidance but that's also a lot to ask for we are moving through the deck pokestop after those pokey gears that concealed cards unfortunately discarding a dark energy and a roaring moon but did get that Explorer's Guidance in the discard. Yes. I mean, this just has that feel of, I want Countercatcher so badly, I don't care anymore. I'm going to use every resource I can to go find it. And it's not there, but the Prime Catcher's found. But that doesn't really work here. Yeah, that does. that's a Nambo right here. Uh, Prime Catcher going to be able to bring up a Lugia V-Star, but has to send back that Roaring Moon to the bench. And it's already hard to retreat in Damien's deck. Yeah, I mean, you could retreat the Radiant Greninja, but then you're attacking with the Roaring Moon. You have zero energies on board when this Pokemon's knocked out, but woohoo, at least you got two prize cards out of it. <laughs> Moral victory would be unlocked. Ancient Booster Energy Capsule on the active. That puts this Roaring Moon out of range of the Thumping Snore from Snorlax. And we do see the Prime Catcher on the Lugia bringing up that Radiant Greninja. We're going to see an energy to retreat. But that means Damien is left with just the two energy on this Roaring Moon. Does get the KO. And there was no gift energy, I believe, on that Lugia V-Star. So no extra cards oh, for McKinley. Surprises, Two Super Rods. And I believe Damien still has access to that Superior Energy Retrieval, although I think it's in the deck. But off an Iono, that could be something that's easily drawn. Two minutes remaining here. This hand is not it. McKinley. When do we spin the wheel, McKinley? Never. 
therapeutic energy on Snorlax. McKinley's going to need to play a little bit faster, though, if he wants to try to get that extra turn out of this time. This yep. Primal Turbo is going to attach to the Chinchino in the active. Not, not sure what you can find at this point. Just add energies onto the board, build up your resources. One, two, three Pokemon there will be able to take knockouts and get you down to at least those two prize cards remaining. But how do you clean up in a spot like this? The second Primal Turbo fails for McKinley. And yeah, he has access to Professor's Research, the Jacques, Lugia V-Star, and a double Turbo Energy in hand. This would have been the turn where Iono could have done something, get those Sadas on the bottom of the deck. Well, it's not going to be the case. Just was not in the cards there for McKinley, and we are down to our last 45 seconds remaining. And that's, uh, that does not spell out good news for either player in this spot. You need to be down to two prize cards to really accomplish anything when you don't see a V or EX in play. 30 seconds to go, and now it's at the point where McKinley kind of just wants to burn these last 30 seconds. Capturing Aroma gets a heads. So you can search out for an evolution. Sure. <laughs> and I think McKinley's going to get his wish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're playing cards. And that is... Just about all they wrote. That's should be time there with five four prize cards. It is impossible to close out a game in this spot. Unsure if there's a gentleman's agreement already played down. I mean, it would have to be McKinley playing Luminion here. It being knocked <laughs> out and then another Luminion <laughs> being retreated to and promoted at some point. Don't think we're going to see that. But it's important that, to note there with, uh, with the way that the players are uh, lined up with their, their records, 29 points, tie here, 30 points. but still two opportunities for winning ins. So the tie is not the worst for either of these players. It's certainly not what you reached for, but we'll, we'll take the point. Yeah, it's not the best. It's not the worst. Uh, it does put a lot of pressure on your last two rounds, though, trying to get both of those wins in a match where you'd have to think if there was maybe three more minutes, this would have finished up. Well, that was turn zero. McKinley goes down to four prize cards with neither player having a two prize Pokemon in play. <laughs> Did you see how the dice were played out? Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a, Damien was turn one and McKinley was turn two and three. I'm like, <laughs> that is a way to win, but this is not, this is going to be a tie between both these great players. And 